Hello, Airbus Cockpit Coach here. In this video we're going to look at the dry engine crank procedure. What is the dry engine crank? Essentially it's a, a way of ventilating the, air, the engine. It's used after an auto start failure where we need to purge the engine of residual fuel buildup and it can also be used on a hot start to cool the engine. As part of the checklists uh, after an auto start failure uh, you may see that a dry crank is required. It's also part of the tailpipe fire procedure. A tailpipe fire is where we have excess fuel in the combustion chamber and that can be caused by FADEC overfueling. The FADEC is the full authority digital engine control which normally operates the uh, auto start for us. When an engine stalls on start and it's still rotating with fuel still being supplied uh, that can also cause a, a fuel build up in the combustion chamber. It could be a malfunction with the ignition system. It may occur after a second start when we've got residual fuel in the uh, turbine area could be an oil leak in the tailpipe or one that's rare but uh, does happen is a fuel nozzle cracking. A tailpipe fire is an internal fire in the engine core uh, although it looks quite concerning from the outside because quite often the, the fans are turning and pushing that fire out the back of the engine after the, after the tailpipe. It's actually usually not as concerning as it looks important to understand that it's the external parts of the engine that have the uh, fire detection and we don't have that detection in the core of the engine around the combustion chamber because that's where we normally expect combustion to occur. Because we don't have that fire detection we won't get any master cautions in the cockpit. We also won't get any ECAM actions to follow. So the tailpipe fire procedure is part of the QRH manual and uh, we can perform QRH actions for uh, dealing with that. It essentially involves dry cranking the engine. Dry cranking the engine is basically very similar to forming a normal start but without adding the fuel. You're turning the N2, getting airflow through the engine which allows fuel to evaporate off. It can extinguish a fire, it just blows it out. And usually that is sufficient for dealing with the tailpipe fire. Ideally we don't want the uh, emergency services throwing uh, lots of fire agents over the engine because that can be damaging. So it's, it's quite normal for us to, uh, to dry crank the engine and that will usually blow the fire out. It's not something that happens often. So let's jump into the cockpit and look at how we perform the dry crank procedure. So here we are in the cockpit. And let's say we've just been made aware that we've got a, an engine tailpipe fire by the ground crew. That's normally done visually or if we've got comms established over the uh, intercom we liaisons with them on that. Uh, quite often it'll be visually. We may even have the uh, window open and have taking a look ourselves outside. See what's going on. But the process for uh, dry cranking the engine is ensuring that initially the masters for the engines are off and the engine manual start push button so off. We need to ensure that we've got a source of bleed air established and this can either be for ground or, or for by the APU. And this is one of the reasons why we'd normally have the APU running when we arrive on to stand. Because you'll get the uh, tailpipe fire occurrence either on start up or shut down. During flight we won't get a tailpipe fire because we already have good combustion occurring. So once we've got our bleed air established um, we need to ensure we've got the beacon on so uh, it warns the ground crew that uh, you know, the aircraft is unsafe to approach. We we'll then move the engine mode selector to crank. And we'll turn the engine manual start for affected engine on. You may want to start a timer depending on whether it's uh, a different procedure, it may be after an auto start, you want to crank the engine for a given period of time as advised by a checklist. 
But in this case, uh, we're trying to extinguish the tailpipe fire, therefore we'll just run the engine for as long as required to extinguish that fire. You see we've got N2 rise, there's no fuel going in, and the N2 will just spin up to maximum motoring. And we'll be uh, liaising with the ground crew. And emergency services, and we'll have, you know, speaking to the fire service on a, a separate frequency. Once we're happy that the uh, the fire is out, complete the uh, dry cranking procedure. Simply come back up, turn the manual start push button for the affected engine off, and move the engine mode selector back to norm. And the engine will spool down. So that is uh, very simply the engine dry crank procedure. So it's used in a, a number of different scenarios, usually after a failed auto start, but it is also part of the engine tailpipe fire procedure. Any questions on that, please drop them in chat. Please like and subscribe. And if you found that video useful, please consider buying me a coffee through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description. Appreciated. Thanks for watching.